Namaste and welcome to Live, Love, Engage. I am Gloria Grace Rand and today we're going to be talking about finding your voice. And this is a really good subject that I'm looking forward to talking with my good friend who I actually just met recently, but I feel like we've known each other forever. Her name is Renee Reich. So welcome, Renee, to Live, Love, Engage. Thank you so much, Gloria. It's an honor and a pleasure to be here. Oh, I am delighted to have you here. Um, Renee is an amazing person. We actually met uh, at a, uh, a mastermind event a few few weeks back and really connected, um, as you'll understand as we get through. But let me tell you a little bit about this amazing woman. She is a four-time number one international and best-selling author for her book that we're going to be talking about called Finding Your Voice, Unlock Your Chains and Unleash Your Greatness. She is a speaker. She is an ambassador for an amazing uh, organization called Chemo Buddies for Life. Uh, she's a founding member of Be Connected. She's an influencer and a transformational coach. And using her voice blueprint, she works with women who are struggling with limiting beliefs so that they can release their excess baggage and go from feeling stuck to unstoppable, gaining more confidence, clarity, and courage in the process. And that's something that I think actually all of us need a little bit uh, from time to time. We can, and certainly <laughs> this year, we're, as we're recording this in uh, the middle of November, we've been going through this year of COVID, which has been a little bit challenging for many people. But tell me a little bit Renee, about why, why you wrote this book. What, what does it mean for you to find your voice? Well, again, I want to thank you for this opportunity to be here, Gloria. And the reason I wrote the book is because I had an illness in 2013 while in corporate America. And that illness kept me a prisoner in my own body, in my own home, in my own health. And that lasted for almost four months. It was called viral pharyngitis, which is an illness that attacks your vocal cords. And it left me with an inability to communicate. I had no speech whatsoever. Um, my entire vocal cords were riddled with sores. So I couldn't eat, I couldn't drink, I couldn't swallow. It was literally a time of hell for me in my life. I was not spiritual at the time. I didn't know what had happened, why it happened. I just knew it was happening and I didn't know how to help myself and doctors couldn't help me either. Oh my gosh. I remember laying in the ER with a very little voice that was left after being sent there from urgent care. And I asked the doctors, I looked up from the gurney, I said, am I contagious? He looked down at me and said, oh, you're highly contagious. You can't be with the public. That to me, and Gloria, you know me, and for many who do, I am a huge connector and I love to speak with others and I could do neither. So the things I love most in this world, God and my family, and next to that is speaking and communicating, connecting. And those were the things that were taken not from me at the time they were taken from me but in hindsight they were taken for me mm. so that was a lesson right there and it was to slow down and listen more and to actually talk less because i was running through life not able to experience what life had to offer mm. so that's the reason behind it. Well, I'm glad that you found your voice again and have it again. So do you, do you think there was, well, actually, I, never mind. you just pretty much said why you, why you think you lost it. I guess that it was for a reason to, to be able to write this book, but how did, um, how did, well, how were you really coping with, you know, during this time? Tell me. I'm going to backtrack just a minute for that. Yeah. If I may, there is more to that because I believe strongly now that the physical loss of my voice in life 
was due to the metaphoric loss of my voice in life. Mm -hmm. And I'll explain and elaborate just a bit because I believe that in not using it to stand up for myself, to speak up for myself, mm -hmm. and to express myself as I truly felt the need to, and to hold back is why I feel that it manifested physically in my health. Mm -hmm because I wasn't using it as it was intended. And I had things that were, would take place in my life and I never stood up or spoke up. Whether it was work or relationship, I never did. I just wanted so much to please others that I really didn't care about pleasing Renee. And what did that look like? And what actions do you take to make that happen? And I was so quick to fill somebody else's cup and to fill my own. Mm -hmm. So. In so doing, my cup became so empty that doctors couldn't even help me. Wow. So, so what finally turned the corner for you? How were you able to finally start, you know, regaining, heal yourself, essentially, especially if doctors aren't helping you out? Yeah, it, it was, yeah, they, they couldn't. It wasn't that for lack of trying, they, they, there was nothing they could do. Mm -hmm. It was by the grace of God um, and my best friend. Mm -hmm. And my best friend is now one of my angels with my father in heaven. Mm -hmm. And if it was not for her, I don't think truly I'd be here today because I, I was home, obviously, like I couldn't go anywhere. I was highly contagious, couldn't speak, couldn't be with the public. I was weak. Mm -hmm. And I never knew when she was coming. But lo and behold, I would look at my window because I stared at my window quite a bit to see the outside world because I couldn't mm -hmm. participate in it. And I would see her driving at my driveway. She'd get out of her car with a mask on, with bags in her hand of food that she had made. I'm, you know, I kept kosher at kosher home at the time, so she would make kosher chicken for me and deliver. She knew I wasn't having any, getting any protein or anything. Quite frankly, mm -hmm. yeah. I was withering away, and she really didn't want that to happen. And she did whatever she could to make sure that that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. And so she wore a mask and come up my stairs with food for me or magazines or things she that I would enjoy to keep myself occupied. And she never stayed long, she couldn't because obviously I was contagious. Um, and she would just stay long enough to give me the, the protein and the nourishment, but something she didn't realize is that she also nourished my soul. Mm -hmm. Because when you, when you love people so much, you love being with them and you can't be you were empty. You know, I felt very empty inside. I couldn't be with my, my parents. I couldn't be with my best friend. I couldn't spend any kind of time with anybody. But thankfully, she said, no, what can I do for her? Not what she couldn't do. What could she do? Mm. And that's a lesson for all of us. What can we give to others? Not in lieu of giving to ourselves first. But how can we give to somebody who is down or going through a rough time? Is it a text? Is it a phone call? Is it a card? Is it something we can give to them to lift their spirits, lift their day? In finding your voice, it doesn't mean you had to physically lose it like I did. Mine was in a very painful way that, as I said, I, I couldn't get any help from a doctor. It was the gift of time to heal. Mm. And it was to use the two things we have, which is this, the ears on either side of our head, yeah. and less of this, which right. is the So I really needed to listen more and to speak less. Mm -hmm. And when you listen, you open yourself up to listening. You hear, you literally hear things and answers to your prayers, to your questions. You hear them when you get quiet. You know, don't keep searching, searching, searching for the answers when you have them within you. I'm going to equate this to a show, a movie that I really loved for such a long time. It's The Wizard of Oz. Mm -hmm. And uh, for those millennials out there, <laughs> you can Google it or look it up on YouTube. Maybe it's there. I, I don't know, yeah. but you can look it up. It's searchable. And the reason I resonate with that movie so much is because if you think about it, Gloria, Dorothy, she was looking and searching so hard 
for, you know, she felt like for the, the courage, right? And the strength mm -hmm. and the, the wisdom and the heart. And guess what? On her journey in her, to Oz, guess who she encountered? The first one she, she met was with the brain, the, the scarecrow. Right. She had the knowledge. And he was looking for that himself, right? He was going to get mm -hmm. that. Then there was the tin man with the heart. He was looking to get the heart. Dorothy was looking for a way back to go back to Candace, but the scarecrow was looking for the brain. The tin man was for the heart and the lion, the cowardly lion was looking for the courage. Now, when they got to Oz, they had already, before they even got there, they had found it within. Mm -hmm. guess who was the smartest in that bunch who always came up with the answers the scarecrow mm -hmm. guess who had the biggest heart of all the tin man and guess who had the most courage and stood up for Dorothy against the wicked witch mm -hmm. the scariest one there was the wicked witch and, and, and who stood up for her the cowardly mm -hmm. lion that wasn't so cowardly and of course, she always had Toto. <laughs> Toto too. <laughs> yeah. That was her, her companion. And he was along for her journey. And she was looking for a way home to Kansas, but she had them within her. It wasn't so much the ruby slippers. It was her own mind, her own will, her own drive to go back, to not be who she was, but be stronger with who she is. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of my all-time favorite movies, and and it's it's funny. I was actually writing my book not too long ago, and I almost used part of that final scene in it um, because I was I was looking at the quote of it because I, I I still think that somehow they didn't they didn't say it right because it was something about that, and I'm not even going to get into it now. But but it was it it seemed a little off, like they were missing a word of that she always had. Um, what she needed right inside of her. Um, she didn't need to be searching so much, but um, yeah, that's, uh, you know, when you were talking and, ex you know, just sharing your experience about, you know, your friend having to come with a mask and here we are in this year of COVID where so many people have been isolated and they've been, you know, and they're having to, you know, wear masks to see each other. How, has this even, this experience even maybe, you know, brought up some unpleasant memories, you know, I mean, in some instances, it could be, you know, could be like PST, no, sorry, PTSD yes. symptoms, <laughs> you know, has, how has this, has this been, you know, any challenge or bringing up any feelings from that, from that time? You know, interesting, somebody recently just asked me the same question, and what I, it has done, it just, lets me feel that same compassion that I, I know I, you know, when I had it, because I know what it's like to be isolated and to not be with the people that you love and who you cherish. Thankfully for technology now, we can do it through Zoom mm -hmm. or, you know, different mediums, even if you're FaceTiming somebody. The difference then is that I was in there was a few different kinds of pain that I had ex been experiencing at the time. The first was the pain in my throat because on a one to 10, it was like a thousand. You can't even, it's just like, I think of sharp steak knives or razor blades going down my throat. I've never swallowed either, but that's in looking at what they look like. Oh, sure. and what I felt that yeah. would be that intensity of what I was experiencing 24 mm -hmm. seven. Uh, so that gives me that compassion for those, you know, for everybody, not just those feeling this isolated um, mm -hmm. during this time. But I really feel that we can use this technology. I, I wasn't doing any FaceTime with anybody in 2013. I don't know if they even had that available then. Uh, and, you know, Zoom, I don't know. I, I wasn't doing any Zoom things with anybody again. I don't know what that was like in, in 2013. Yeah. But, um, and quite frankly, even if I was able to, I'm going to tell you I wouldn't have. I was in such a bad space oh, yeah. uh, mentally. So when I said the pain, the pain, the first pain was the physical pain mm -hmm. uh, from experiencing that in my body. And then 
the emotional pain that am I going to be able to speak again? Because doctors said they don't know if it's permanent damage. This may have been permanent. Wow. So to be living not with this, not physical, not only physical pain, but knowing that this may be it, there, there's no, you may not be able to speak again. Right. You, you have to find another way to communicate in your life. Mm -hmm. And that was very scary to think about. So the physical, the emotional, and the mental pain and anguish mm -hmm. that one goes through when they're in that physical and emotional pain, what it does to you mentally, I was so depressed. I was in a, just a very, uh, very bad way. I really didn't uh, want to survive what I was going through, quite frankly. I didn't know if that was the way God had chosen to take me back home mm -hmm. because there was you know, no light at the end of the tunnel. There was nothing like, well, it's just start getting better. You should start feeling better. Take two of these. We'll check on you next week. Right. There was none of that because there was nothing to check on that the messages I was getting on my my voicemail were always from my doctor aside from some spam calls that would come through <laughs> but it was from my doctor suggesting that I go for more test hmm. more blood tests hmm. and she always had them scheduled for me she said go get more blood work so it was like 19 vials later hmm. and no answers wow so I was already in a weekend state it was just trying to like go back to the layers of the onion and trying to figure out what does she have? How can we possibly help her? And that's very frustrating. I would imagine for a doctor whose sole job is to help others yeah. and, to oh, I'm sure. that they, and to not even have an answer and to go through all this, you know, here I'm, I'm just giving the, 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 you know, blood to, to test it, to find out what, what can they do? And there was just nothing. Like I said, the gift of time that we allow ourselves, which is what we have right now with COVID as this is going to be aired, is a gift of time that we're all given. You don't need to wait to get sick for something that you can see that, you know, it's, I think what this has done during this, this entire time is give people a gift. If they choose to see it that way, it's on how you perceive things. You can look at it like, you know, oh my gosh, I can't do this. I can't do that. I'm like, you know, this is stuff that's, what can you do? Yes. You, can, you can be with family more as far as, even if you're um, wearing masks, you can go over and spend more time with them. You, or you can social distance, but at least you can be, or um, Zoom with them or spend more time. Choose mm -hmm. to do however you want to, but include your friends or family that maybe you couldn't before because you were going on this flight or that flight or this appointment or that appointment and go, 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 go. And then you hear that something happened to someone, you're like, oh, I meant to call them last week. And then you can't, you know, so make time and take time for the, the people and the things that matter most to you that you couldn't do before. Mm -hmm. This is an opportunity we've all been given. It's how we're choosing to use it, which is going to make the biggest difference in everybody's life. Mm -hmm. And as you change your life, so you change others. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. What was there something that, because I know you mentioned that your friend, you, you do credit her as being part of what helped you recover, but but you also said that you were pretty depressed. I mean, was there something that, you know, maybe finally like, you know, you hit rock bottom and, and something happened that, uh, you know, helped you to start, you know, slowly start recovering? Can you think, was there anything, or was it just something that just sort of just started gradually happening as you started? I don't, I'm not, I don't even know. So I'm not, <laughs> I'm putting words in your mouth and I don't want to do that. So why do you think, why do you think, you know, something happened? Don't what, what, worry about putting words in my mouth. I, yeah. I'm, I'm able to speak now, I'm good. <laughs> uh, great, great question. Great question. It wasn't a light bulb moment that mm -hmm. switched. It wasn't that. Yeah. It was when I found out when I, been sent to a specialist hmm. and I write about this in the book uh, is when they told me that it wasn't permanent damage oh okay that actually that may have been that probably was that, that light bulb like okay th this is not going to be permanent this is something that will get better hmm. and when you know it's not a sentence like this is the final right. piece that then you know there's a way out and up to help yourself mm -hmm. and support the healing process. So I was 
sent to a vocal coach. Hmm. And I write about that in my book. Her name is Michelle. My doctor's name is Dr. Mm -hmm. Laura Tangrady. So if you're listening, Dr. T, mm -hmm. thank you. And Michelle and all the other people in my life, my best friend who was there for me. And it was knowing that she was there for me. Mm -hmm. Because when you don't have someone in your life, and there may be people out there saying, well, that's great that you had someone I don't, then reach out. Yeah. Because there is somebody that you, you have to, you know, make that first. I don't know you're out there if you don't reach out to me. I don't know that. Mm -hmm. I, well, I won't be here for you. And, and I can't be if I don't know you're existing. So give yourself that gift and reach out. And I think that's the biggest gift you can give yourself. And my best friend didn't give up on me. Mm -hmm. He didn't throw in the towel and say, well, that's the way it's going to be. People say, well, it is what it is. It is what it is if you make it that way, but it's what are you choosing to do with what is currently happening? Yeah. How are you choosing? We have choices in life on how we say or do things and react to things. You know, I'm not saying that everything is, you know, rose colored glasses that I see, oh, everything is peachy keen. <laughs> There's a lot of crap that happens. Yeah. You know, we all have it. And no one is different than the other. You see people posting all over on social media. Don't get caught up in, in the hype of everything you see. Because just like everybody else, they've got a backstory. Mm -hmm. And it ain't pretty. Yeah, It's downright scary and, and sad. And, and But I'm not choosing to stay in that way. Because I was given an opportunity to impact lives. And that's what I've chosen to do. Mm -hmm. And part of that is, you mentioned earlier, Gloria... <laughs> Your is finding your voice. Here's my book. It's not a Photoshop picture. I was literally at that beach, Newport Beach, California. <laughs> I went on an August day and I asked a strange man um, to, as a young guy, I asked him, I said, will you take some pictures? And he kindly said, yes. And I said it was for a book that I'm writing. He turned out to be an intuitive. Mm -hmm. And his mother, I said, is this your mom? And his parents were there and he, she said, yes, um, and her, his mom was a, a medium. So, and she had messages to deliver to me, which was incredible. Oh. She could barely see a rain of sand on the beach. And I, I <laughs> happened to walk up to this man who had just gotten there 10 minutes before while I was stopped at a meter. He hadn't even been there. He was getting there. Oh. And I walked up to, he said, I just got here. I said, you're kidding. Cause I was stopped at this meter. Yeah. And there's reasons why things happen and you never know oh, at yeah. the time. So this is, Find your voice, unlock your chains, and unleash your greatness. I'm going to share with you that the chains I was bound up in, Gloria, and to your audience were my very own. And unleash your greatness is the greatness that I have to unleash to everybody now and for them to know that they, too, have that within them, just like Dorothy, mm -hmm. the Wizard of Oz. And it's not always easy to do it. You can't necessarily do it on your own. Right. Because why are we in certain situations we're in? Okay, because those things... They happen for a reason. And I didn't know why I was homebound in so much pain for so long. Like, I'm thinking, what did I do wrong? Why am I being punished? What kind of sentence am I being given for what reason? So you don't know why you're going through the hell when you're going through it. You don't say, let me see where the lesson is. Let me go do meditation. You're just in it. You're just in that yeah. space. It's not, it's, as I said, it's not pretty. Right. You don't start questioning of, of, you know, well, I questioned. I'm like, say, you don't start questioning. I was questioning, but I didn't understand it because I, I didn't have any anything to think of why that had happened I didn't know mm -hmm. I just knew what I was in in the moment and those moments were as I said almost four months long mm -hmm. so um, I know that having somebody in your life to get you through those times is really what was a game changer for me mm -hmm. and having my best friend um, there for me to know that she was just not giving up on me that if she didn't give up on me, how can I give up on myself? Yeah, yeah, that's so important. You're very blessed to have had that person in your life to, to get you through that. That's I do, I do feel that. I'm going to also say something else with, with this book. What I've done, it's available in ebook as well. Um, what I'm, what I've done is after each chapter, I post questions to the reader, and I literally left line pages, sometimes two or three or four pages even, to write down your responses on. Because I didn't want to just write a book about, you know, how I lost my voice. It's actually little chapters within the book of different 
things that have taken place, not all about the voice, mm -hmm. just different stories. One was meeting Jack Canfield in San Diego, how that happened. Um, just different things that you will all be able to probably resonate in, in one way or another, not necessarily about one specific thing, but each chapter of there's a takeaway section that will help walk you through something that's happening in your life and or that had happened in your life that you will be able to relate to. I make it very really relatable to my audience. Um, there's a chapter about kind of overstepping my boundaries with my mom mm -hmm. that I'm not proud of. So there will be things in the book that you'll be like, I can't believe she's telling us that <laughs> because some things are so funny that I actually say yeah. and other things you'll We'll probably look at it and say, I can't believe she's actually telling us this because that's really sad. She felt that way. Yeah. So, uh, you know, about herself. So it, there's things that will, I'm sure, resonate with many out there. And that's why I encourage the book because it also gives you an opportunity to look back on it maybe a week, a month, six months later and say, wow, look at where I was and look at where I am now. So it's a really good stepping stone and a great tool to utilize in your own life. That's good. I'm just... Had to mute myself for a little bit because I have restless dogs <laughs> in the background today. Oh, it's it's that time of day, I guess. But I I know that now you know you really are passionate about helping other women, and I know I we were talking before we started the recording that I guess you've got some sort of program um, that you that you're doing. So can you tell us a little bit about what that is? Absolutely, and thank you, Gloria. So it's a voice blueprint I've developed. It's based on the butterfly effect. If you think about it, the butterfly, it, before it becomes a butterfly, it's, it goes from the egg to the caterpillar where it's crawling. Then it goes into a chrysalis stage. It's the shell, right? It stays there for a little while and then it emerges as a butterfly. So it takes on a different form from where it was. And it's a voice blueprint, which is based on that butterfly effect that takes you through those stages to emerge in a much better and stronger way to your highest self. And that's what I take my clients through. And I have a course that I welcome. I keep it from 12 to 15 at a time because I like it to be an intimate group mm -hmm. and very safe space for these women to find and use their voice and to emerge into that greater self that they are. And it, it's not always an easy process, but it's a worthwhile process. And it's our own layers that we need to release those limiting beliefs, mm -hmm. those doubts, judgment that either we feel has been placed upon us from others or, uh, or we have placed upon ourselves. Mm. Yeah. So that's what I take my clients through if and men are listening out there they're like what could she help men too because I know I could use it or this one could use it <laughs> I will always always I'm open to speaking with with people and to find out if there is a fit and that is the first step to have that conversation so absolutely mm -hmm. I will welcome that my main niche is women mm -hmm. uh, but I certainly will speak with men as well because I know they too go through that and sometimes almost worse because they are a man and they feel like they have to uphold that machismo Right. you know, way of, of being. And that's not always easy. So mm -hmm. I certainly appreciate that. And I recognize that. So please uh, reach out. If people want to put hashtag voice in or, or email me, um, Renee at ReneeReich.com. And in the subject heading, put hashtag voice. Mm -hmm. So I know, you know, that it's from this. And I'll, I'll know that it's from this show. Just put Gloria... Grace ran podcast, hashtag voice. So I will know that you heard it and that you would like to have a conversation. It's a 30 minute complimentary conversation that I'm opening up to the audience uh, because I am looking for about 12 to 15 special people out there to um, to join me and for me to help you know them with their on their journey. Mm -hmm. Not to, I don't wanna say the word help. I don't like that word help. It's like people need help. It's support. <laughs> Yeah, because you don't want to feel like you're helpless. So like, yeah. I certainly don't want to feel that about myself. So I'm not gonna. So we're gonna scratch that word. It's support. It's support yeah. is what we we all want, need, and love. And that that love is the best four letter word I've ever heard. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm here to do is love on people and and support them through their journey. Because without my best friend's support and love, 
I would not have made it through. I know that. And the love and grace of God. So for that, I am truly grateful and blessed. Mm. Well, that's so awesome. Um, oh, shoot. Okay. <laughs> I was going to ask you something that just went poof, um, out of my brain. So let's see if I can pull it back in. Um, oh, darn. Um, <laughs> well, well, that's oh, all. It'll come up. I, I, yeah, I know. Absolutely. And, and what I'll do is I'll, I'll change that. See, now I've got a uh, change perspective here to see if I can help. Oh, um, I know what it was now. Have you found in working with, with clients, is there a, what do you think, is there a common like limiting belief that people have that you have found that uh, is maybe one of the reasons why maybe that when they come to you that you've been able to help them out with? Is there something that you've seen in working with people? They're not good enough. Mm -hmm. Not good enough, can never be enough, do enough, give enough. And that was me. So these this course that I've developed, this blueprint, is based on what I've journeyed through myself. Mm. So it's not coming from, well, I just did this and hopefully it'll work. It's like, I know because I walked through this. And it was from that personal experience and serving others with this as well that I know it works. And I know that you know, you have to go through these steps, mm -hmm. like, like the caterpillar. It yeah. doesn't just come out. It's not just born into a butterfly. Right. You get out there and start flying away. It goes through these stages in its life and its journey from the egg to that the caterpillar. Like we're born, we're, we're born, we crawl. Mm -hmm. And then we, you know, we slowly get up and we, and we may fall. We have to hold on to something to stand up. We're a little wobbly. You know, we go back into that shell and we emerge as, as the person that we're meant to be. And sometimes it takes years to emerge. I mean, if there, there are people that are out there that are like, they're in that chrysalis stage, they're ready, they're, or they haven't even gone to the chrysalis stage. They're still, they're trying to get there. They're trying to, you know, free themselves to be themselves. And that's what I like people to be able to do with this. And that's why I've developed, it's for you. It's for the audience, for those people out there that are listening and go, oh my gosh, this is what I've needed. This is exactly what I've needed. You know, those moms are giving to everybody but themselves. Like even with COVID that they're making sure this is and the homeschooling and everything they're doing for the, for the husband, for the kids. And even if it's a single mom for the kids and for mm -hmm. the house and the laundry and everything. But what about her? Yeah. What about you? What about those people needing to hear this and go, oh my gosh, this is, this is perfect. Give yourself this gift in your life. We have this one go around in this physical world that I'm aware of. Mm -hmm. and why not make the most and the best of it not just make the most of it but make it the best absolutely yeah. while we're here now and i've done this for you so please you know let's share our voices together reach out i will ease it's easy to zoom all over the world with this you know you <laughs> i am looking for about 12 to 15 for this first round mm -hmm. um to do that and then i'll keep adding for maybe another group, but I want to start out from 12 to 15 because I like to keep it intimate. Mm -hmm. And I think in the intimate setting, there's more growth that can take place. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I've participated in small groups like that. And, and, and it's good because then everybody gets a chance to, to know each other and, yeah. and, and they can help. Um, maybe you see some blind spots that you're not able to see yourself. So absolutely, Glory, you, you nailed it. That's exactly why I do it in the group because yeah. you will see that you, somebody else will maybe show that vulnerability. You're like, oh, that's me. Mm. You know, you don't always see in yourself what you see in others because right. you're, you know, you're projecting something out there. And then when you hear it or see it, you recognize it. And the reason you recognize it is because you actually have some of that within yourself. That's right. And so when you are in that group setting, you know, maybe it's you get the accountability partner or you make it, you know, I'm all about connections, as you know. So you mm -hmm. connect with somebody else that can support as well. So it's about sharing our voices together. And I said, in a very safe space and platform. And that's why I've developed it for you. So mm -hmm. I look forward to sharing our voices together on that platform. So please, please reach out again, hashtag voice mm -hmm. in the subject heading, the Gloria Grace rant. So I'll know it's from this show. 
and um, we'll set up a time to chat. All right. Well, sounds good. Well, I appreciate you being on the show today. And um, it's been a pleasure, really, it has been a pleasure just getting to know you. And I know that you are helping so many people. And now I've got cats meowing, you know, it's just it's a menagerie today. They're just making themselves heard. <laughs> oh, the, the joy of recording from home, you know, it's okay. Yes. <laughs> Well, listen, Lori, your your cat has a voice. Yes, he does. He does. He, and he's a Siamese. And if anybody out there has had Siamese cats, you know they are especially vocal. Yes, I know. I see you down there. So this is uh, all about finding your voice. Your cat is right there. Yeah, absolutely. So um, again, thank you so much. Sorry for being distracted by, by my pets. Um, I appreciate you sharing uh, your story with us today. And hopefully you have inspired someone out there to find their voice and be sure I, I will have your information in the show notes. So in case you're listening somewhere where you're not able to take notes, be sure you go to liveloveengagepodcast.com and then you'll be able to get all the information there uh, about Renee. And until next time, as always, I encourage you to go out and live fully, love deeply and engage authentically.